Hey guys, this is Chaos with Tape, and today you join me for episode 5 of Solar Civilization. And today we start off with one of our first proper plane tests. This is um, a mock-up of the parts I have right now, those uh, long thin wings, I've forgotten the name of them, but uh, but they're pretty good for the first aircraft, so yeah, make it quite nice and maneuverable, even with ferrum aerospace. And it's got a couple of solar panels, so I can only really fly it in the day or I'll lose torque, but it doesn't, I don't really need it. Um, and torques only, I mean, I don't need it because of the air surfaces and because ferrum aerospace does make it very easy to fly without torque. But if I flow, flew, not flow, if I flew for more than a few hours, um, Kirk Kerman here would probably die of, you know, coldness. Although it is Kerb, I don't know, he'd be fine. But we're just going to do a quick little flight because um, this is the first proper plane test. We don't want to be jetting off to the other runway or to the mountains or the Arctic. Or I do like to fly every now and again with a big old science lab and gain some tundra science, but uh, yeah, this is flying quite nicely actually. It does have a big tail plane for your control, um, which makes it quite nice to just make small corrections, especially during the landing. I gain a quick crew report over Kerbin Shores because, um, well, this has to have some scientific value, or uh, they'd yell at Kirk Kerman for wasting money on fuel. Although it is very efficient because it's a jet engine and um, and this is one that has a power band like really um, perfect for lower atmosphere because basically the difference between turbojets and um, normal jets on this game uh, is that turbojets have their ideal power band is quite high in the atmosphere maybe 10 12k um, but this is uh, better for quite low down anyway we've circled around a bit gone about 10 kilometers away from the space center and uh, we're gonna come in for a nice landing I don't want to be quite far out because I I'm not actually brilliant at landing, so we'll be on and off days. Sometimes I'll be able to land anything, and sometimes I'll crash a plane on its front wheel because I put the lift too far back. Started doing that a lot. Very big problem when you have ferrum aerospace. But um, when I was playing uh, career mode sometime before, before I was doing this series, I had a free, uh, space shuttle which I'd often bring back and land. But then that's quite hard to, you have to be pretty expert with aerodynamics or you kind of lose it in the mountains. Anyway, we're coming down a little low now, um, but it, we've still got a lot of velocity, so we should be fine. Um, actually, no, it looks like we might even overshoot now, looking at this trajectory, but we're, we're slowing down all right. Um, just got to line myself up with the runway, and I am coming in a little skew if, uh, so yeah. And those back wheels are mounted on girders because it just gives it a little better uh, control, uh, a little better purchase and gives me more control of where it will be. But anyway, we're now we're above the runway and it's looking fairly good. We just need to uh, pull up a little bit, really flare, not hit the runway too fast, but not go too far. We've cleared the tower now, so we're kind of running out of runway. So Kurt really needs to put it down, but a little fast, but it's fine, because it's a pretty hardy spacecraft and it's made of only the sternest of stuff. But we still might run off the end of the runway because we're still going pretty fast, but we slow down just in time. So, that was a nice first flight that wasn't a weird probe that I crashed into the hills. So, onto something that I've been talking about for a while. The military have finally been granted access to a few of our solid rocket boosters, and now they're trying out some fairly simple missiles, firing them away from the runway, but the air captures them and they turn up, and then run out of fuel just above the runway, and then they fall to the runway, which is kind of annoying, so we're a little angry at the army right now, but, um... But we had to give them uh, some access to our technology or they'll be all scared about what we're doing with it. But anyway, enough of that. Now we are going to the moon. This is Bob Kerman using the new 2.5 meter parts. This is one of the most unefficient launch vehicles I've ever, ever made for going to the moon. Usually I could do something about this size but with 1.25 meter parts. But actually the main reason is that I wanted uh, that um, the spacecraft I wanted to land wouldn't fit inside a smaller fairing and I didn't want it to look really dumb. So we're testing out some new parts and it gives us a nice Delta V budget and because of how big it is and how fairly light this um, lunar lander is, uh, we can use the top stage to go all the way to the moon so we didn't have to waste money on a third stage so we can find some solace in that at least. Um, anyway, we're uh, moving on to that right now. Uh, this is one of the KW engines, one of my favorite actually. It's very efficient and it uses um, the uh, the effects from RCS ports, so it does look quite good, and it does get about 410 ISP in vacuum, which is very good, um, which allows me to uh, 
and go to the moon on just this stage. Uh, so that's always good. And uh, I have used procedural fairings because I quite liked how they looked. And um, I haven't unlocked. No, I have unlocked. Have I? Well, I, I just use them instead of KW fairings, which I do prefer. But I, I, I think I may not have unlocked them yet. But I feel like it. Oh no, no, not yet. But by the end of this video, that's what we're looking for: some bigger fairings, so we can get nicer rockets. But anyway, we have our capture. I believe this is all at four times time accelerated. It looks like it. Um, yeah, because the amount, the way I'm flicking through maps, either it was four times time accelerate, or I was like taking methamphetamines and just going maps. Gotta click through maps. Gotta click through maps, man. That'd be nuts. Anyway, we've come in a little skewer, so we might have to do a um, a quick plane change, just uh, because the scientists want us landing on the equator, and it's looking. Well, actually, we could have, but yeah, it's you know we have a lot of fuel, so it doesn't really matter. And we've brought another t 11 days worth of life support, as the uh, regulations seem to tend towards, because it's either one day or 11 days, so, you know. And we've already used a third of one day's life support. But anyway, we must skip around the moon and come down in this crater. That's where we want to be, because we've been to the Midlands, got some science from there, but we haven't had any from that crater. So this, I believe, is the far side crater. So we'll plant a flag there telling us what it is so that we don't come back here Looking, um, looking for the east far side crater because that's always a problem I tend to have. I come back and I'm like, hmm, where have I landed, or something like that. Anyway, we'll ditch that stage. I think I had a little fuel in it, but we simply don't need it, so it can crash into the moon and maybe get us some seismic data. I don't know. I don't have that installed because I like some of the um, interstellar science, but I don't really want to be using plasma drives because that kind of takes some of the fun out of it for me. And it sounds really complicated, and that'd be like. Hey, you know that Scott Manley series? Yeah, I'm basically doing that. But anyway, um, yeah, so I'm, I don't want it to be too like other people's series, and I just don't really want to use it. But anyway, we have got some landing legs deployed now. They do open very wide, so there is no chance of us falling over, because I tend to fall over when I land. Um, this is carrying some materials bays and such, and Mr. Yu. Uh, I think that's about it right now, but we are a little above the moon, yeah. It's kind of hard to tell from this, yeah. Um, but we did stop a little early, but we have tons of fuel. I have the fuel setup I've got is um, a half tank, a half 1.5 meter tank, and two of those 45 liter tanks, kind of like turned on their sides. And if you turn them on the sides, they clip into the other tank, so it's a little cheaty. But I like how it looks, and we'll just say it's more compressed fuel, and you know it's fine. I had to use a two meter rocket to get it up here, so yeah. Anyway, we'll get our materials goo, materials goo, mystery goo. 40 science for that, and 100 science for that, the materials bay. That's always good, but now Bob Kerman is itching to get out after he's written down his, uh, he's just scribbled down his observations of the inside the cabin there, and you'll grab an EVA report flying above the moon. Store that in there, and now you must jump to the moon because we haven't unlocked ladders yet, which is an odd way of, uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, anyway, we're now on the surface and everything is wonderful, so we'll take an EVA report, getting ourselves 32 science and uh, grab some of that moon dust and there are large concentrations of melted something, I don't know, I don't have time to read this I believe this is at one time time accelerate but I, I tend to go through it quite quickly um, I still haven't unlocked the, uh, ooh I'll plant my flag and then I'll talk about the solar panels wait what? I take another, oh no I just reviewed the sample, I was confused, yeah this is the east far side crater or was it just the far side, we'll find out when I write it down on the flag ah oh, you can't really see the hexagon thing Ah. What a shame. Anyway, yeah, the far side crater. We will come here again one day when we have better equipment, or maybe we'll put our base here, but I'm not sure. It needs to have ketane there. I've got to start uh, doing some scans for that, because we're going to be wanting uh, bases, places soon. I think that's what I'll call the uh, the end of the business. Um, oh, yeah, now I'm putting first landing to, oh, first contact, I always call it that. Yeah, I think I'll call my business for um, space tourism bases, places. Uh, anyway, the first landing on the moon. That's not how you spell moon, that was a typo, I didn't think it was spelled like that. God, I type slowly. The first manned landing. <laughs> wow, taking my time with this. Crewed by Bill, Ker Bob, Kerman. Um, yeah, the spacecraft is the Morpheus 2, if you haven't seen already. Um, the Morpheus 1 was the one I flew last episode that just orbited the moon. Uh, but Morpheus is what I tend to call my lunar landers, and I believe the next, um, like the, um, he's gonna jump around a bit while I talk, uh, 
I believe the next um, crude moon lander that's kind of in development is called the Morpheus lander and it uses green fuels or methane fuels. But anyway, I feel like taking a look at this canyon. It looks very canyonous. So we'll land uh, and just stroll up to it, I guess. I like to spend a bit of time on the moon because often I just land, get in and leave, but that's, you know, you wouldn't do that. But yeah, the landscape on the moon these days looks freaking amazing. Anyway, we must RCS back to the uh, pod because I can't be bothered to walk the four meters. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, this is shaping up to be a very successful mission. It's a shame he couldn't bring any friends, but we don't have docking ports for an Apollo-style mission. One day we'll do that. Or uh, maybe a space plane, or maybe we'll uh, land some something. Maybe uh, one day I'll land a space plane here. Maybe it will be armed with uh, some of the military's new missiles. Maybe. Anyway. We should probably head off now, because uh, the moon's a bit a bit tired of us. We'll just leave our flag there, and um, yeah, ignite that engine and get out of here. We've got to get back now. I'd like to have spent more time on the surface of the moon, but my phone's about to go off, so that's a little annoying. I'll just turn my speakers off because it's interfering. Um, I'd like to have spent more time on the moon, but we simply don't have the time. There's no time! Yeah, that's why. Uh, Liam Neeson was like, there's no time. And we were like, but we kind of had to do the science. He's like, there's no time. We were like, okay. So we'll just put our aqua apps in the right place, and then instead of just circularizing, we'll go straight home, because uh, that's the virtue of landing on the far side crater. Should head off there. You can see Tylo and Lathe over there in the background, and we'll bring our peri apps down to 30 kilometers-ish. Yeah, that'll slow us down sufficiently. But we forgot to grab the science while we're on the moon, and it's much easier to do in orbit, so we'll grab all of that. Um, all at four times time accelerate, so it's completely spazzing out, but uh, everything's good. Get back in the um, spacecraft, and then uh, head back down to the uh, to the surface of Kerbin, hopefully. Or burn up in the atmosphere, as it may be. Let's hope not, because this is one of our commanders, and respawn is off on TAC life support. Oh, and it's flown behind us, and it's... Ah, oh, you can see it's all flamey. And it'll... It's, ah, there you go, a bit of it exploded. I do love seeing that. But it's about to go out of range, so we won't see it all burn up. Anyway, this is still at four times time accelerate, so it's crazy. But I like to, you know, you see this all the time. Um, anyway, we'll pull our chutes and hit the surface, I guess. <laughs> Just that little zoom in stare, like, are we going slow enough? Anyway, we must land. Maybe I'll get the um, those real chutes. Those are quite good. And, ooh, but I've just noticed there are awesome cacti around here. I, I'd never seen the cacti before because I never spent much time in the desert, so I'll run over and take a good old gander at them. This is now at 16 times time accelerate running, technically. Look how untextured these are, but still, I, I really like the random little features they put into the game, like elm trees and stuff. But anyway, now we have another plane on the um, launch pad. With the science we got from the moon, we were able to research more we were able to research more parts. So that's what we have here. Kerb Kerman again, our pro pilot. He has flown a grand total of one missions, which is quite a lot for Kerbals. Not Jebediah Kerman space mission pilot, but you know. Anyway, this is using Delta Wings, bigger flaps, same tailplane, and same kind of similar core, but with a science bay added. But um, it's quite a nice plane. It is fairly controllable. Um, we'll grab some science, because... Uh, Again, we want to, well, the Aeronautical Division will uh, be wanting to show that it's worth something in these days before they can go to space on a single stage and laugh at the Rocket Boys, being like, <laughs> you use more than one stage? Wow. And, but anyway, we can also pull this into a vertical climb, which is pretty good. Um, it's looking uh, pretty great. And we can go crazy spinning it. It's still using that girder setup until I um, figure out a better way to put my wheels down. But anyway, we should probably, you know, stop climbing and go back to the runway because uh, we are only detailed for short short test flights right now, so uh, probably shouldn't mess around too much. Although, you know what? Let's dive at the water. That never goes wrong for anyone. So Kurt's having a little bit of a little bit of a play around diving at the water, but pulling up before he hits it because you know that'd be foolish. But he's pulling about five G's in this turn, so that's pretty good. And it's back up to like a G. So that's, you know, it's good for testing lots of things. The materials are all going crazy under the uh, under the um, G forces and, you know. 
but planes are pretty cool. I mean, space pl planes that can go to space, freaking amazing. Planes, that, hell, even planes you send to space on a rocket, like a shuttle, or just put it on top of a rocket. You know, I want to be doing all that kind of stuff. I want it to be kind of similar to like real world space, but with more interesting things. It's you know, I want to balance this series quite well. This plane did get a little uncontrollable right now, though, actually. It was kind of, you can see it's flaring around a bit. And I find when you fly without SAS off, you have to really input a lot. So you might as well just fly with SAS on. But anyway, Kurt is feeling like he wants to enter the danger zone. So he's going to buzz past the tower and make the guy spill his coffee all over his yellow jumper. And he's going to take a highway into the danger zone. Yeah, you know, Kenny Loggins. Boom. There you go, and you know, that's not quite a great place for landing, so he does need to go turn around. I'm getting some uh, pretty, um, uh, yeah, we're still getting some pretty good control. The SES is a bit making it go crazy, as you'll see. So, uh, yeah, but we need to throttle up and fly away from the runway so we can turn around and come in and land and, you know, return our science and our pilot to the, uh, to the, well, where, where do they hang out? I suppose the astronaut complex? Maybe they uh, have houses somewhere that we don't see. Yeah, could get the city lights mod. I don't really want to get the cloud mods just because, you know, the stuff looks fine. And, you know, it's that's done in quite a lot of series now, so it's a bit like, eh, what else is new? Oh, and I just remembered I had the um, thermometer uh, on the science, on the kind of science base, so I took a little report of that. That's nice. We have been unlocking lots of new parts. We kind of... Uh, got the better um, aerodynamic things, which included 2.5 meter fairings, all the parts you see right now, well most of them, um, including the thermometer, which we will be sending to many places on probe, no doubt, and uh, a few other engines and stuff, <clears throat> so that'll all be moving to make our space program better, but uh, you know, we've got to land this plane before we move on to those things. Distances are pretty deceptive in this game. We're five kilometers away from the space center. It doesn't really feel like it, but uh, we are traveling pretty fast. But anyway, we have shut off the engines, turned down, put the gear bay down, and now we need to stick at the landing. So we'll come in, but uh, there's an anomaly. We're not pulling up properly, and it's not it's not really pulling up that well. I try to throttle up to get some gimbal control, but we're coming in a little a little steep. So then we hit the front, and then we just crash into the ground, and Kurt's dead. The plane explodes, we lose the science, we lose the pilot, and that is uh, simply because um, the wings were too far back, so we had too much lift pulling the back up, so that screwed everything up. Um, so we'll work on our planes in the future, but uh, that is the end of this episode, so I do hope you've enjoyed this, I do hope you're not too sad about poor old Kirk Kerman. No doubt we will uh, plant something somewhere in his honour. Anyway, this has been Chaos Booth Tape, I will see you next time.